Are you nervous? A little bit. You don't have to be nervous. <laughs> it's just conversation. That's why I'm nervous. <laughs> You've been nervous all day. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to today's podcast. My name is Jada, one of your co-hosts, and I'm here with... Hi, I'm Alyssa. Yeah, so you would have known Alyssa from another podcast as well as the D&D videos and the unboxing videos. She sprinkled throughout the entire... I was like campaign, that's the wrong thing. The entire channel. So today we're going to be doing more of the deep conversation starters. So... We're going to start with the first question. (laughs) (laughs) So again, this is by For Your Eyes Only. You can see it on screen, but here we go. So number one, what's the most pain you've been in that wasn't physical? (sighs) How did it hit you out of the gate straight away? (laughs) Um, um, For me, I think it was like a bit of backstory about like not dwelling into too much of my life. I have two younger siblings who both have autism and I think the most pain from like that is my brother had to be like, you know the story, Mm -hmm. had to be removed from the house and like um, because of like his age and like, um, like, I'm not going to go into too much because they don't want that on the internet and like yeah so he had to move out at a young age and I'm just like my baby, my baby brother kind of like hit me like hard but now that the months have gone on it's like become like a no this is good this is all good like yeah it was hard to kind of hear the news and kind of yeah go through it but once it kind of time went on it yeah. kind of not understood but made yeah. almost more sense in a way yeah know. um is yeah my cousin put in a re- really nice way that um because i lived with him and grew up with him because he's my brother i've spent so much life with him it's hard to like suddenly be like Oh, he's leaving. Like that. yeah. So basically, my brother moved out and like he moved out before you did. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's he is younger than me. I'm the eldest, and I'm just like, bro, take mm. me with you. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, you want to live together? <laughs> I, I cook. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cook you. Hang. No, I I understand that. I remember when that happened though, because mm. you were just you seem to be in so much like internal pain. Yeah, and like fun fact yeah. about me, I don't cry. I don't like crying in front of people, and like. I was trying not to do that in front of you, but even though we needed to, and I was just like, no. Nope. Like, for me, like, crying is for the weak, and I'm like, it's mm. not. But for my brain, it's like, haha. Like, yeah, we were both taught the same thing, which is interesting because I know that men. Did your dad tell you that? Yeah. Yeah, because men are always taught that, like, crying is for the weak. <laughs> hey, fist bump. But, like, dad always. He said similar in a way. He wasn't like, ah, oh, crying, peasant. He was just more like, you know you don't need to show your emotions that much because my dad like i love him to death but he's a very like analytical person he's the whole philosophy is like you know well why do i need to tell you i love you you know that already why do i need to tell you i'm proud of you you should know that you know so he's a lot of that type of stuff so emotions weren't really shown from him yeah. and he was very much the same mentality of like no nah, you don't need to cry because that's just showing too much or yeah. you're being too open and exposed and things like that and I brought this up to dad recently but um he always told me to never trust anyone because they will always stab you in the back yeah. and they're not worth your time my dad did the same thing and I explained that I said that to him and he's like oh that's not what I meant I'm like, <laughs> what did you mean I'm like please explain and he's like no no he said he was trying to tell me that like you could trust people but not basically don't tell them everything and anything about yourself yeah obviously still keep some stuff to you and like Still not 100% trust the person. Like, it could be 99.9. Yeah. But still have the what-if situation. But I have an overthinker, so I go into overdrive. (laughs) So I'm like, (laughs) stress levels. Yeah. But yes. So I think for me, the most pain was... I've briefly touched on this in videos or different things. I don't remember what I've said anymore, to be honest. But um, I talked to you about this. Mm -hmm. But it was back in uh, 2018. A lot of different things had happened, but um, I had an incident that happened. And it wasn't the physical... I learned this now after, like, you know, many times going to therapy and things like that. But it wasn't the physical, like, thing that happened to me that was the quote-unquote traumatic part. It was the whole, like, everyone around me who I trusted and cared so deeply about ignore me or... 
talk above me, not give a shit at, you know, they just kind of were like, so let's say you and I were talking, right? I'm just gonna say, like, we're gonna use Dakota as an example. Because, yeah. you know, we both love it. But like, let's say Dakota could be in this room and be like, yeah, yeah, Dakota said this is fine. You know, Dakota said you can do this and that. Yeah. And they would do that constantly to me. Or they would say to you, be like, hey, you know, how's Dakota doing? I heard she's not doing well. And then, you know, it'd be like, well, you know, Dakota's doing fine. And it's a lot yeah. of, that's why I am a big person. <laughs> nope, that's what wrong. <laughs> yes. I am a person who hates circle talk now. Yeah. I never used to. It's very annoying. But it got to the point where, like, you know, I had people who I thought were family and people who I still regard as family talk about me to other people or you know like even at the time like my boyfriend at the time he just was like oh, i don't understand why you're acting like this but he would talk above me and talk about personal information about me to other people yeah and it just made me feel so like alone and heartbroken because it, to me my immediate response is well obviously like i'm not good enough or i'm useless or Am I so scary people don't want to talk to me? Which is a lie. Yeah. But, you know, it, it got to the point where, like, while that wasn't the most, like, traumatic thing to happen in the world, because it had spanned over so many months, it just constantly drained me. And, you know, I hated it. <laughs> don't, don't blame me. Yeah. Nah, it wasn't fun. But hopefully this one will be a bit better. Yeah. Is there a person in the world that you think is perfect and why? <laughs> cliche if I say this. I'll say anything. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't like how my mind went straight to him. Like, oh, which one? <laughs> um, Ed, my boyfriend. No. <laughs> and, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> like, it's why? part of the question, not me. <laughs> I don't know. It's just because, like, we haven't been dating for long, like, two months mm -hmm. and stuff. But I say this because, like, obviously past stuff all men have like either left me or like hurt me in some way and when i'm with ed it's just like wow you actually value me you actually care and stuff because like i'm using yesterday's example we like we made brownies and stuff it was like a cute wholesome thing and i'm like i don't do this with many people especially like guys and i'm like and yeah i just think he's like perfect and he looks after me and he treats me well and like you're just like that's my brother no no no, no, no. okay <laughs> context a, for context he's not my actual brother but i've he i grew up oh, God, i grew up with him in like saint john which is an organization that did first aid um, cult. it's basically a cult <laughs> like i mentored him and i've he's always been by my side so he's basically been like my brother yeah and i call him that because i, I give him shit for it occasionally but um Obviously, when she says that, you know, dating my brother. No, it wouldn't matter either yeah. way if he was blood related or not. But just for context for people who are unaware. Because sometimes we make jokes and we realise, oh yeah, people don't know this. Yeah, like, um, you two aren't related. It's like, hold on, context, context. Yeah, because a lot of people thought that him and I were cousins. I yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. I honestly thought that. And I'm like, oh yeah, you're Jada's cousin. like, no. I'm like, brother. I'm like, Jada doesn't have siblings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I feel weird whenever I talk to people and they're like, because I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm just with my brother. Like, but you don't have siblings. I'm like, oh, hold on. <laughs> That's why every time I'm like, oh, yes. So I say, Ed, my brother. But he's my friend, but I call him brother. Yeah. <laughs> or like, you know, I say I have two sisters. But they're my friends, but I call them sisters. Yeah. <laughs> it's the whole, like, context thing. But yeah. Yes, I just, little things he does, I find that, like, wow, you're generally perfect. And, like, everything I would have asked for, like, you know, relationship or partner he's doing so i'm like eh. but that's good that's cute that's good to hear ed if you're listening don't listen to anyone <laughs> yeah. um, i guess let's don't listen after saying all of that don't listen to this whole book <laughs> now nah, he'll listen to it <laughs> um it's hard because again childhood stuff but I, I always tell myself that like if someone were to be perfect then Something must be wrong with them. Yeah, I, I used to have a quote when... I still have it. There's no such thing as perfect. But yeah. then it's just like, oh, let's chuck that out the window. Yeah, because to me it's like, you know, if you're perfect, then that's your flaw. Yeah. Is that you're perfect? Because that means you have nothing to work on or improve on. You're like stuck in a state. 
Ed, you have flaws. <laughs> <laughs> he has many. No, <laughs> no, no, but like, as I've grown up, I've realized like, no, you don't have to have like picture perfect. You can have your own version of perfect. Um, <laughs> I have a person in mind, but. You know what, Yeah. Bye. I'll, whatever. <laughs> There's this boy that I have liked for a long time, and um, <laughs> he made me nervous. Now. He, to me, he's my definition of perfect because you know he's kind and caring. He works hard. Let's <laughs> get the shit out of me. It's fine, cool. <laughs> it's fine, but um, anyway, anyway, he yeah. To like even when I'm like hanging out with him. I get like really nervous, but uh, for context, we both play D and D together, and um, that's how we kind of met and things like that. But I used to be extremely nervous going because it was like my cousin's group of friends, and uh, I'm very awkward around new people. Uh-huh. And I remember I was extremely nervous, and I was like borderline shaking. Like I had headphones on, and I was trying my best to be like really calm, but I was just because I didn't know anyone. And there's, you know, seven other people yeah. that I have no idea who they are. And, you know, I was like, okay, I'm scared. Yeah. And so I sat next to my cousin's girlfriend, Shanna, I love you. Um, <laughs> she's amazing. But, um, you know, she made me feel comfortable. And then she, like, introduced me to him. And she's like, oh, yes, you know, chat. She was like, yeah, you know, this is, like, my like my god brother. And I'm like, hello, god brother. I am, you know, so-and-so's cousin. And then every time we play D&D now, he always walk in. And give me a big hug and be like, hello, how are you? Heart stuff. <laughs> yeah, literally. But I remember like one time he didn't give me a hug because he was too busy talking. And he was like, I'm so sorry, I forgot. And he gave me a hug. And I'm like, okay, my heart stops. So it's restarted. We good. <laughs> like I'm now calm. <laughs> it's just a reboot. Nah, we're good. <laughs> but it's it's nice though because to me, again, don't want to talk too much. But like my, my ex was the person who didn't let me talk about a lot of things, i.e. uni friends. My interests are Dungeons and Dragons or like YouTube, anything that essentially makes up who I am. I wasn't allowed to speak about to him because you know, he didn't have friends. I wasn't allowed to talk to my friends because if I did, then I was wasting his time essentially, uh, which was shit. But he is your shit. He is, yeah. But you know, long and short, that it's nice now to be able to have someone who right now is like my friend and. You know, we talk about like D and D, and he'll like ask me how my day is, or he'll, you know, check up on me, or like just those little things. And I'm like, this is perfect. And like his interests and whatnot. I'm not gonna ramble too much. <laughs> Long and short of it, just to me, he's my definition of perfect. And if you're hearing this, hi, <laughs> hi, hi. Um, I mean, he knows bits and pieces of this because I've kind of told him and. Hopefully this will come out before I give him his birthday present. Which is like <laughs> three months late already. Yes, he is busy, which is fine. His birthday was in April. As we're recording this, it's uh, end of May. But um, that's fine. Way in there, I've kind of written about the whole like meeting him at D&D. And I actually like fully wrote in there. Um, I'll show you the letter later. But it's um, it's all nicely done. I have it written. Okay, okay I have okay. it on my laptop still. I, I just, well, I didn't want you to ruin the bowl or something like on the box. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. That's fine. Um, so we'll go for it now. I was just gonna grab it up. I, I yeah, why not? You can get it. Actually, I'll read it later. I don't want to read it loud because. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I can read it later if you want. I'll, just, I, I'll just show you. Um, so it's like this entire paragraph. <laughs> essentially but um yeah he, he's just a genuine sweetheart and like you know you've met him yeah and whatnot and he's i like and it sounds really bad but i like that he's kind of shy and kind of awkward yeah i didn't know i didn't picture him to be like that well for one this might sound really rude and i re- apologize i thought you're gonna be tall <laughs> <laughs> i thought he was gonna be tall see i'm glad he's not tall okay. i like I mean, he's he's my height, if not a bit taller. Yeah, but I just think because like I've only seen photos, I'm like, oh yeah, you look good, good height. Like, <laughs> you look good height. I don't, I don't know, <laughs> but I'm just saying like, was he similar height to Ed or under? He's shorter than Ed. He's shorter than Ed, but Ed's nip. Ed's a giant. Bullshit. <laughs> well, I'm a four foot nine, <laughs> and he's almost six foot. So yeah, 
Nah. Okay. Anyway. Giant and dwarf. <laughs> Giant and dwarf together. <laughs> Next campaign. <laughs> oh, God, no. That'd be kind of funny, actually. But no. Nah. Anyway, he's great. <laughs> so, um, what what brings out the best in you? Oh. Um. don't really know, to be honest. Um. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, really. Do you want me to go first while you think about it? Yeah, exactly. Um, what brings out the best in me? I like to say my friends genuinely bring out the best in me. Because, you know, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, <laughs> it's a really good environment. And, you know, you're always going to have issues or fights in your friends here yeah. and there. But, you know, like 99% of the time, it's a good environment. Everyone is accepting. And this sounds really culty, but I've spent years kind of cultivating good friends. Yeah in a way that not only do they all get along or they act like they get along <laughs> but um you know even if they're not 100% getting along it's still like a supportive environment yeah so I really appreciate that because you know I have friends you know my like sisters who I've known since I was five and six and you know they get along with you know you who I've known for three years and I've got like you know the devil twins I've got all these different like cultivating quote-unquote like groups mm. And I think they work quite well together because I've also had them with different events or like small parties and things like that. So I think they just kind of generally bring out the best of me. And I think every person brings out a different good version of me. Yeah. So like, you know, with you, I'm a little bit overprotective and over motherly. And I, I don't mind that. You know, some people don't like that. Some people do. Eh. But you know, like others, like with the Devil Twins or Emma and Kate, I'm quite quiet with them because mm. they're quite loud and they speak a lot. So I'm very laid back and relaxed with them. But, you know, that's just that. It's not like I'm changing the personality. It's just more like, yeah, I can kind of be a bit more relaxed or chill. And, you know, like with Erin, uh, like my sister, I mother the shit out of her. <laughs> and I'm very overprotective of her. Don't we all wear? Yes, very <laughs> overprotective. But at the same time, you know, I tend to be quiet. Like we have a lot of like chill conversations and we talk about like the future together. And, you know, like all these different things. Like, you know, even with like Dakota, our friend, we talk a lot about, again, like future stuff, but also we have very serious conversations with each other and we'll say to each other, like, you know, be honest with me. You know, yeah. why are you being a dick, for example? Or like, it's very like, almost like cut dry in effect, which is really useful. And I can say stuff to her and normally she says stuff that's quite poetic. Yeah. <laughs> She's, you know. Like, I'm going to drop that down. <laughs> yeah, literally, I'm like, oh, that was good. Like, I remember she said something to me, and it was like, oh, Dakota, you think a poet are you? <laughs> and she was like, only you. <laughs> Try to fly into the good ones. <laughs> you know, like, but that's the thing, though. Like, we can make all these jokes and things like that, and I think that's what brings out the best, because I get to talk about random shitty things, and it doesn't matter. You know, I can talk about D&D, or the book I'm reading, or I can... I don't know, we can talk about anime or K-pop or literally anything. And it's great because, you know, we're genuinely talking about the things we love and enjoy. Yeah. So that brings out the best in me. Yeah. I, feel, I think I'm a bit the same. Like, people, like, the good people around me, like, my friends, they bring out the best in me because, like, a little bit like you, each person brings out something new in me. Mm -hmm. So it's just, like, here I might be, like, with you I might be quiet, but then I can open up and, like, be myself and to that point. And, like... Yeah, and I never really thought about like what brings out the best in me, and I'm just like, I guess it's just the good people around me who like care about me because they want to like see me grow in some kind of way or yeah. like develop, and I'm like, it's really nice. It's so, the friends you make along the way. So <laughs> <laughs> all my brain was thinking of was it's the friends you make along the way. Yeah, and then kind of same question but reverse. What? Let me look up the exact wording <laughs> because I will stop this up. What brings out the worst in you? Uh, yeah, a bit like opposite to what I was saying. Like, like bad people in my life. So like, I won't name names or say mm -hmm. people who, but like, generally if you treat me bad or if you, like, get me to start like talking about you and stuff like without you there, I don't like that because. I genuinely be like, I don't like being a quote unquote, quote unquote bitch because like I've been in that scenario where girls have been bitching mm -hmm. and I've just been there like, 
like this. Yeah. Like, why can't we all get along? You know, just like, I don't like being that person, like in that situation. So, yeah, it just like I would say like bad people, just like in life, because like again, yeah, won't name names, but like some people in my life who are like very adamant about something, and I'm just like that's a bit toxic. Mm. yeah like yeah i think it's it gets hard with some people because you want to find balance especially because there's some people in your life where like you can't get rid of yeah at, well you know as easily as other people per se so it's hard to kind of exactly like cut them out of your life because i know a lot of people are like well if they're toxic just cut them out you know it's hard to do that with some people not because like it's physically hard but because you know They've either been in your life for your entire life or, you know, there's those connections and it is quite hard to just kind of cut and run essentially. Yeah. But um, I think for me, what brings out the worst in me is kind of similar to what you were saying, but like as soon as anyone ta- attacks my friends, I just, I get really pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> that and just, I think for me, it's the repetition of like constant disrespect again borderline to like more my family and friends because this is gonna sound really bad but i give like zero shits about myself but i care more about like other people in my life touche <laughs> touche <laughs> touche <Touché. Touché. laughs> but like it sounds bad when you say it like that it does but like it does <laughs> yeah i i get what you mean because like i'm kind of in the same not the same situation but like I'd rather people around me be happy than other myself. Yeah. Because I just feel like from their happiness, I can be like, okay, cool. I did that, so that makes me happy. I made them happy, so that makes me happy. So I'm like... Yeah, no, I agree with you. Like, I generally love seeing people happy, and it makes me happy. But I realise as well that I solely want, only want to make other people happy. And only say yes to things because it'll make them happy and they'll like trust and believe in me yeah. but you know it got it gets to a point where if you do that too much you're just going to burn out way too quickly yeah we have to learn how to say no and i think yeah that's my <laughs> issue that, that's both my issues it you know it gets bad sometimes and i think it's that's why i'm kind of fortunate in some ways that we have like uni or yeah like other commitments because then it's not like we're saying no it's like no 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 like i can't hang out because i have something else on yeah I've got other things planned, so it's kind of a way to be like, oh, look at that, like, you know, stuff's planned, what a shame. It's not like I don't want to hang out with people. Yeah. It's the genuine, like, I'm just tired. <laughs> and I'm a person, I've always been like this since I was little. Even, like, after my own birthday parties or sleepovers, I just sleep all of the next day because mm. my, like, social battery was just dead. And I'm a lot better at it now. Like, I'll, you know, Still, if I have sleepovers, I'll be a bit tired the next day. But I'm not, like, completely dead. Yeah. And, but this... I just sound really bad to myself. Wow, I'm realising this. <laughs> Jeez. But, you know, the beginning of this year, it was great because I was doing something literally every single day. Mm. But then it got to the point where my body physically couldn't move. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> this, this might be bad because, like, I could look around. But physically, like, I was telling my legs, I'm like, all right, get up. Yeah. Move. And nothing would happen. It was almost like being paralyzed, and it was the weirdest feeling. But I was like, no, no, I gotta, gotta do something today. Like, I gotta go, go, go. And I'm like, oh, no, I can't move. Or, like, I'd just be able to move. And then I'd just start throwing up. And obviously, that's not a good thing. No, it's not. <laughs> no. No, it's not a good thing. But it's because I'd spent literally every single day of January yeah. doing something or it was with someone because I didn't I also didn't want to be home alone in my own like thoughts at the time yeah. but I just wanted to be with friends but I think the difference is I'm, I'm doing a lot better now where yeah. it's if I'm hanging out with people let's say it'd be two or three people per week yeah. per se or you know if it's going to be more it'd be like let's just say in theory I'm hanging out with you today right so tomorrow might be a break or I don't hang out with anyone until the evening. Mm. Or let's say, you know, hang out with someone Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So it's there's breaks in between. Yeah. It's not day after day after day. But yeah, you know, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> yeah. What's a childhood dream you never got to accomplish? 
<laughs> well, I guess we're still young, so we could probably try and accomplish them. But what's one that you don't think you'll be able to accomplish? Um, there's one, but I don't really want to share this on the internet. So, like that, I'll, I'll tell you this link. Yeah. But fine. like, um, there was two jobs I wanted to be when I was a kid. One I'm trying to accomplish, and the other one I'm just like not smart enough. <laughs> I'm like. The one I'm trying to accomplish is to be a florist. Yeah. That was something I wanted to be for a very young age because I my nonna, my grandmother, she loves flowers. And I thought to remember her if she ever like touched the past or anything, I would always have like flowers to remember her. Yeah. So I wanted to try and accomplish that and like yeah. Have like little things about that with her. Because, like she generally raised me and stuff. But like the other I think I talked about this as well. The other dream I had as a kid was to be a zoologist. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And I say this, like, I'm not smart enough because, like, it's a lot of work to be a zoologist, like, and, like, it's fun and all. Yeah. And, like, because my, my dumb kid kid brain at the time was, like, I want to be a zoologist so I can work with the baby pandas. Where the fuck are the baby <laughs> pandas? These pandas <laughs> have not done anything in, like, the past 10 years. Yeah. And just, like... But, you know, I reckon you can still do it. Yeah. It's just, like... I don't know. It's still a like, toss-up, but, like, I'm more dedicated to be a florist because... I find more joy arranging flowers and stuff and hearing people say like, oh, you did this. That's so cool. And I'm like, e-. and I guess I can continue that creative like lifestyle I kind of have. Yeah. And like being a zoologist, it's just like, this is cool. But it's also like, I you know, I only want to do this because I want to hang out with animals. Yeah. It's not, that's the really big point about it. Because I think someone to me was like, so what kind of zoologist do you want to be? I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> There's more than one? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, like, what kind of animals do you want to work with or something? What do you want to do? And I was like, this was like Adrian. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, okay. I'm like, <laughs> what do I want to do? So I kind of thought about it. I'm like, maybe not. <laughs> it is scary trying to think of like, you know, what you want to do for your future. Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> the kid is like, I'll just get this job. No, nope. <laughs> like, no, dude. That's gonna take you a while. Yes, like I want to be an astronaut. Thank good luck. Like, you gotta go to America for that, man. Yeah, like I remember as a kid, I wanted to do something with like CSI or like yeah. crime type stuff. I had my own little like CSI kit and everything, and I'd make my parents like touch random glasses so I could like dust the fingerprints. I'd like rip my hair out so I'd be like, oh look, evidence that I look under. I I did that a lot, and like I was still have been and. Um, have been debating to do criminology or not but I remember I have it written upstairs somewhere but I actually really wanted to either become a police officer or join like the Air Force Mm. so I've always loved kind of caring for people protecting people because in my like I this is the one where I say like it won't come true because I wanted to be a knight in shining armor as a kid Anyone who knows me, plot twist, not hard to figure out. But um, <laughs> I remember thinking to myself a couple of years ago, um, it would have been, yeah, about four years ago, I was like, all right, well, what's the modern day version of a knight? My brain come up with either a police officer or like military air force related thing. And I don't think I could be a police officer because my empathy would just shatter me. <laughs> <laughs> Because I think I would, sh- like, I'd have fun arresting people. But like you did a crime. It's okay. You can run <laughs> But, like, I would be like, I'm sorry. Can I pull you over, please? Hi. You were speeding. That's okay. Is it okay if you, like, give me your registration? No, okay, cool. Help. I just generally don't think I could do that, you know? Like, yeah, I could probably tackle someone and, like, arrest them and do paperwork. Well, that, that, I think that's why my brain was like, okay, well, criminology side of things. I'm with the Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And I'm like, when you're like, paperwork, I'm like, get up. Yeah, I'll be Terry. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. I love Terry. Terry's He is a beautiful man. Um, Easy there, white child. <laughs> Easy there. Him with his yogurt obsession. I love how that got put into the show just because, he, like, no, Terry he's... loved it so much. So they put it into the show. I just love how they kept his name. Yeah, just yeah. Terry. It's like, with the character and the actor. Yeah. But yeah, I always wanted to be kind of police officer or Air Force because my grandfather was part of the Air Force. He did like all the mechanical engineering type of things. He still has uh, his little black book. Most people, it's all the people that they've slept with, whatever. I was going to say, <laughs> For my grandfather, it was every plane he ever touched. 
Ah. And the drawings of it, like he could look up at the sky and be like, oh, this make a model plane, it's going this one. He could look at a plane and be like, yep, it is this, let's just say anything, it's a Qantas, it's a, I'm going to say random things, but let's say, you know, yeah. a Q3R, and it's going to Brisbane. And you could tell just by looking at the bottom of a plane. Like, that's when I, it's so cool. And he has this book and he's written down all the different planes and all the things he's worked on. And it always was like, oh, that'd be cool. And I don't know. I guess because with my with St. John Borderline Cult, um, <laughs> it really is. You do a lot of like drill practice. Yeah. And I love drill practice. I found it so fun. I loved like, you know, standing at attention because I was also the one that had to direct everyone. Uh, okay. So you- and I loved being the one being directed as well. Like I loved both positions. Sounds weird. But, you know, it was a lot of fun to do that and kind of yeah just do those little things and i'm like oh i i should just do something to you know protect the country or whatever but then i'm also like um i don't know about that what a name. I, I, it's scary like that's why i don't want to like shoot people if i were to do it yeah but you know i could go into the medical side of things and you know like treat people because you know i do that here and there but you know? It's all yours. Like, I want to help people. <laughs> I wanted to touch the animals. <laughs> well, because I've always been about helping people. So and now it's just like, eh, mine was literally like, I oh, guess I want to arrest people or fly away. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's literally it. I don't know. I'm trying to think if I had any other childish, childhood dreams. I well, I have one that I hope I will be able to accomplish. <laughs> I should. Because I want to, we can talk about ones that we want to. So one of the ones that I would love to accomplish is, well, I have two. One was to move in with my best friend. I've had that since I was little. So Aaron, my friend Aaron and I are figuring out if we're going to buy a place or rent. Yeah. Or leaning more towards buying. Buying's expensive. Yep, it is. Um, that. That's a thing. <laughs> um, so either that or my dream, which sounds so stupid, but um, I always wanted to be kind of like a character in all the books I read. So all the books I read are very, like, you know, I guess fantasy, medieval, that type of vibe. Like, you know, if you know Shadowhunters to, you know, any, pretty much anything by Holly Black, Cassandra Clare, that whole universe, even going to, like, The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings. All oh, those. <laughs> oh, my God. I am the right size for Hobbit. <laughs> no, you're too tall. I'm taller than Hobbit. Yeah, not by much, but you are. But... <laughs> You know, you see, you'd always read about or see in movies the whole like having a slow dance. With like normally, it's like either a slow dance under the stars or like there is like cutesy little moments. I think it's so cute. It is. Like I've never danced with someone, so I can't say shit. I've never like besides like my dad or mum. Like I would slow dance because weddings we had to do it sometimes like the father daughter dances ah uh, i said no <laughs> yeah see i i yeah. we didn't do it very often so and dad doesn't dance so i got what i could but <laughs> i've never like really slow danced with anyone before and i wanted to if i were to do it i'd want it to be like a nice moment even like it doesn't have to be like set up beautiful mm. like you know even if it's just like playing music and dancing like you know, in like anywhere it doesn't have to be like set up nice yeah. but um <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry um yeah point being i i'm a kid who's just loved always loved the medieval times wanted to be part of it that's why i collect swords and shit anyway what's what's yours that you think will come real um i would say like borderline to yours like with the slow dancing thing like I would always, I always wanted to experience that, but for some reason, I want mine to kind of be in the rain. Mm-hmm. I just being like that cliche, like kiss in the rain or like dance in the rain, yeah, kind of thing would be nice. And like, I don't know, because like at a young age, I thought like I would never like find someone because I'm just like, eh, well, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I don't need a man. Has a man. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, I'm apart from like the zoology and the florist stuff. Like jobs per se. I I remember one. I wanted to be a singer when I was a kid. So my mom put me into all this like singing stuff and like to make me sing and stuff. Yeah. And like 
she also made me do modeling because apparently that'll boost my confidence like look at me now mom <laughs> i have so much confidence <laughs> it's like look at it doesn't exist <laughs> yeah. but like yeah i just remember i wanted to be a singer because like few days ago my cousin tagged me in a video of me when I was like eight years old singing happy birthday to my sister. No. Yeah and like she was like if anyone watches The Simpsons I think you would recognize like there's like a thing where it's like the Michael Jackson and Bart Simpson make, it's not really Michael Jackson yeah but like um they make a song and it's like Lisa it's your birthday. Oh happy yeah. Happy birthday Lisa. I did that for my sister so I changed Lisa to like Adriana yeah. and I was like Oh, I remember when I wanted to be a singer. That ain't gonna happen, okay? It's like, haha, nope. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird when you have, like, child-ish or childhood dreams. And you yeah. like, think back and you're like, why did I want to do that? You, you can't do anything, sweetheart. Like, no, 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 no. Just uh, sit down. You are tone deaf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I thought that for a little bit, too. Like, oh, maybe I could be, like, a singer of some description. But I'm like... I'll leave that to the rest of the family who can genuinely sing and yeah. have singing careers and shit. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I I know for me, like, I always wanted to play drums. I thought that was so cool. I want to play violin. Ah, just instruments. I, I'm not good at guitar. I've tried. I just know. And hands are too small. Yeah, and piano, I just know. Hands, hands are too, too small. small. <laughs> just hands. hands. <laughs> I don't know. It, like, it's so weird because only until recently, like, literally this year, have I now gotten a passion and or, like, drive for my future. And that's terrifying to say. I think still in the last year of uni, so, like, we have to fucking hurry up and think what we want yeah, to do. Yeah, but it's so weird because, like, you know, it's taken me almost 20 years yeah. to figure out remotely what I want to do. And even then, I still don't know. And I, it's so scary, like, talking to little kids. Because, like, I was talking to my cousin... She's 10. She's like, yeah, I'm going to have a, a like a little shop and I'm going to open it and going to sell cupcakes and she wants to open up a bakery. Yeah. Oh, that's and I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Like, good on you. She's like, yep, yeah, I know what I'm going to name it. I know what I'm having. I'm practicing the recipes now. And I'm like, shit, okay. She's like, yeah, I'm going to wait until you die though and then I'll open it. I'm like, all right, you little shit. <laughs> I, 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 it's like, I love you, but uh, I know she was meaning it as a joke because yeah. she also thinks I'm like old. So. Oh, yes, 20 years old. <laughs> Well, she thought I was, like, near 100, so, you know. Ah, uh, yes, it's <laughs> Hey, I look great for being 100, if that's the case. Just... <laughs> the only time I'll say that. I remember one more, but I can't... It, it like, left my mind to that anyway. Oh, that's all good. <laughs> but, yeah, it's so good seeing, like, you know, little cousins or things like that. Like, you know, young people kind of figuring out their dreams already. Yeah. Even if it's not, like... Even if they don't do it in the future, they have an idea. Yeah. And I think that's really cool to see. Because I remember as a kid, like, I, you know, I said I wanted to be police officer for that, but it was yeah. a thought. It wasn't a, like, yeah, I'm going to do this. Yeah, you weren't passionate still. Yeah, I, like, I was passionate about, like, crime. <laughs> not make, not doing <laughs> it, but, like, you know, watching the shows and doing it. But I know it's very different to actually, you know. It's very different to TV. Yes, 100%. The only time I started to get passionate was in year eight. Yes. For some, I told you about this, I think. But for some reason, we had a CSI team come to our school. No, and, you did not tell me this. Oh, we had a CSI team come to our school, uh, good old St. Mary's College, and um, they set up like a proper like closed was now a closed case, and they put up like the actual bullets, and you had to like twist it and get it to the right thing. But it's basically a bunch of things that you could do if you did the job. Yeah. And you had it was like two hours to solve the case, right? And I remember it was really cool because they had like a photo of like the outline of the body and the exact placement of like, there were literal like real photos and everything of this crime. They're like, you have two hours, go. So I came back to them an hour later and they're like, oh, yeah, what's wrong? And I'm like, yeah, I figured it out. <laughs> they're like, what, are you, what, what, what do you mean? I'm like, well, this person did it. You can tell because look at like the foot trails, it's leaving off this way. And you can correlate the same like, you know, pattern to this. And like, you know, I explained it and they're like, Oh shit, that's good. You good job. Team? Yeah, and it was it was so fun because I remember like you know changing the bullet to fit the exact case, and you know you had to like turn it to click properly, yeah. and obviously it was probably a, a more kid version because we were thirteen. Yeah, well, thirteen, fourteen. But it was so fun, and I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I'll do this. I don't see why not. I'll give it a try. 
And the next year, I'm like, yeah, it was fine. It's whatever. I'll leave it. I'll, I'll do something else. <laughs> I just remembered the one that I was thinking of. The reason I'm doing this degree as well was I wanted to be a cartoonist. I wanted to make cartoons and stuff. So I wanted to do animation and stuff. And trying to remember what was like the cartoon because like I watched so much cartoons as a kid. Yeah. On cable, so like not the good shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you had like Cartoon Network. No. no type no. shows as well. I was gonna say before. Oh I yeah. I was gonna <laughs> Like Cartoon Network, I wish. No, yeah, uh, but like the shows that were on, like Cartoon Network or yeah. Nickelodeon, I, I, I guess. Yeah, I think it was because like I was watching like Looney Tunes, and like that's where I was like, I want to make cartoons. This looks fun. Learns about. I don't want to make cartoons. Like, this is too hard. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'd rather watch them. It's fine. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Oh, it wasn't Looney Tunes. It was Ninja Turtles. I was gonna say that. Makes more sense. Yeah. The Ninja Turtles, yeah. Ninja Turtles is such a good show. Ninja Turtles. How do you feel about all like the new remakes of just everything in general? So many like live actions and remakes coming out of different things. Yeah, well for Ninja Turtles, at first, like there's like a new one. I'm currently watching it because I was like, I want to watch it, it looks cool. They made a new one of like the Ninja Turtles where Raphael was like the leader and like yeah, and it's just like, okay, this is different, this is nice. I was, it's definitely aimed for kids. Yeah. And that's where I'm like, okay, no, this is this is okay. But at first I was like, what is the design? This is all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Why is this happening? Starts freaking out. Yeah. And like, I didn't mind the live action. Uh, given I watched like the live actions when the, like, people were dressed up in natural puppet suits. Yeah. Had the, like the masks and stuff. And I'm just like, I think I'm just so used to like stuff getting a reboot and stuff. Do not like the Winx reboot. That can go No, back. I I watched a little bit of it and I couldn't stand it. I like we both loved the Winx Club and I think we still do love the yeah, Winx Club. Flora. Oh my god, just I don't understand. I don't even like the Netflix one. I'm sorry if people do, but I do not like What's it. What's it It's like fate or something? Yeah, I think it's fate. Fate? Why? What what's the point? I just don't like it because A, you you didn't include Techna at all. Yeah. No, you, you had the chance to make her British. And like you didn't do it. <laughs> but like and you made Sky date Stella and I'm yeah. like, why are we talking about this? And like isn't Stella like I can't remember her exactly because I didn't watch a lot, but isn't Stella like bitchy as yeah. well? Like what the fuck? Like yeah, she's kind of a diva in the original, but she's not a bitch. No. Like what? I just because I know in like one random episode somewhere, I don't remember what season, but they had, uh, like, I think Stella was, had dated Sky at one point, but I think it was like a, they had changed names at the yeah, time. Yeah, so Sky was called Brandon, yeah. and Brandon was called Sky, but I don't know if they actually, like, Stella date the, the blonde one. I can't remember if she did I or not. Like I felt like she did, did at one point. Yeah. I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> Because I thought she did at one point, but a wink. yeah, a wink club. Oh, whatever. Close enough. <laughs> wink club. Because, you know, God forbid, she probably has dated legitimately everyone. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, it's it. Yeah, because it was mainly Brandon, but I thought at one point she had dated Sky, but I was No, they didn't. Oh. I think I just think that how the names got switched. So you thought like the people switched? Yeah. Maybe it was just a name swap. I don't know why you would swap names. But I just, my goal is to have a relationship like Stella and Helia. They're just beautiful. And I think Stella's also the reason why like flat. Stella. No. Oh. Whoa. No. Oh. Flora. Flora, back it up. Okay, backtrack. Because I can't remember what I said. Goals is to have a relationship like Flora and Helia. There you and go. I think Flora was the reason I love flowers so much as well as my nonna. Yeah. Because like. And Flora is just beautiful. It's funny because, like, looking back, I always loved Sky as a character, but also because I used to connect him to my primary school crush. Yeah. But his name was Brandon, <laughs> so <laughs> I used to call Sky Brandon. But then, if anyone said anything, like, but that was his original name, <laughs> so I'd get away with it. But also, it just made me look really stupid. <laughs> but now I'm like, wow, look at Sky. And then look at most of the guys are like, mm, okay. There's a theme. <laughs> they seem to track. Mine's always been like long hair. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I think that's why I like Helio a lot as well. But he was just generally a nice person. So I'm just like, mm. Ed, 
girl in here. <laughs> oh, God. No. <laughs> oh, God. Just put a wig on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. When you lay in bed at night, what do you think about? <laughs> Too much shit. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I don't go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> the anxiety just TikToks. <laughs> uh, I think about so many different things because it's the only time where I'm. Like, normally I'm by myself, but for some reason, as soon as I'm in bed, that's when my brain's like, oh, now we can start to think about everything. Yeah, does your brain do that thing? Like, do you remember that thing you did in primary school, like, 2,000 years ago yeah. or something? Like, remember how that embarrassing that was? I'm like, can you shut up? I'm like, Mine did, yeah, it does that. And then recently, for some random reason, it's like, hey, you want to remember, like, all of the horrible things that you've gone through or done at once? Yeah. Let's replay it constantly. And I'm like, I just, I just want to sleep. Please, let me sleep. But, like... It's weird because, like, even going to, like, the dream scenarios, I don't dream. I well, I used to not dream very often, if not at all, really. I used to have one re- reoccurring dream and that was it. Um, but now I'm getting more dreams and I don't know how to feel because we're all positive. I had a dream that I fucking dated Eda for my hero. <laughs> I'm glad one of us could A. <laughs> but then, like, it just, this was a dream. It was about cartoon men. But, like, I was dating Eda. But I had the biggest fattish crush on Luca from Miraculous Ladybug. It was Did you have that when you were here? Yeah. That's right. Our dreams hit the twine. I remember that. Because you woke up and you were like, should I tell Ed? <laughs> Am I cheating? What do I do? Am I cheating? I'm like, it was Ed real in that dream world? No? Then you're fine. I was like, I was like the only human and everyone else was cartoon. I'm, I'm like, like, it's fine. That doesn't count. You just go back to sleep. <laughs> but yeah, every time like we share a bed, yeah. <laughs> we dream like we are in the same we dream. dream. For context. I mean, it doesn't matter. We share a bed occasionally, uh, just because, why not? Sleepovers. <laughs> Sleepovers. But every time we wake up, we look at each other like, did you have this dream? Yeah. Was the he there? Yeah. yeah. I don't know why. Because, like, we had a dream, like, we were dancing, we were doing the yeah. slow dance kind of stuff, and we're like... <laughs> we, we both just looked at each other like, oh, okay, GG just <laughs> gets out of bed. <laughs> but it's so bizarre when things like that happen. But, like, now, like, all of mine are becoming more and more positive, and I'm like... I don't know how to feel. This is gross. I want to sleep. Mine is just weird. Like, I had a dream, like, it was so weird. Like, I think it was, like, two days ago where it was, like, I was hanging out at my best mate Jess's house. Yeah. And my cousin was in the area, and she's like, oh, I noticed your car's at your friend's house. Would you like me to drive you home? I'm on the way to your house anyway. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. We got home. I'm like, I feel like I forgot something at my friend's house. Oh, that's right, my car. <laughs> and I woke up and I'm like, what the fuck? What a weird scenario. I know, it's just like, that's so weird. Yeah, because I was thinking in my head, I'm like, how are you getting the car home? Yeah, I just got home and I'm like, I forgot something. Because, like, generally I almost for- always forget something at her house or, like, I always forget something at someone's house. And yeah. Like, I forgot something. <laughs> the my car. car. <laughs> like, Jeez, that's kind of funny, though, in a way. I can see that happening. <laughs> yeah, no, I can 100% see that. I'm trying to think, yeah, mm, no. <laughs> the weirdest dream I think I've ever had is, I was I was younger when I had this, but I was in like a candy type land and I was being chased by a giant gummy bear with a jelly bean sword. That sounds terrific. No, because I hate both of those things. <laughs> I hate jelly beans now for the small factor of, in high school, we had to do this experiment where they were flavoured, uh, like jelly beans, right? Are they bean boozled? No, no, they were just like different flavoured ones, right? But we would have one where we were bl- uh, blindfolded and oh. have to tell you what colour and taste it was. And the one without blindfold and then tell you the taste. Yeah. To see like if you, this was in psychology class, but to see basically if you associate colours with taste. We did that with Coke. We did that as well. I set that out because I don't drink Coke. That's yeah. just my own personal thing. But I literally said to my teacher, I'm like, I don't drink Coke. She's like, cool, you can sit down and write <laughs> notes. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. But for the jelly bean one, I didn't really like them in the first place, but I was like, oh, I'll give it a go. We ate 20 jelly beans. You know what I could taste? Sugar. Sugar. <laughs> no, no joke. My, my partner, like the lab partner I had, she's like, oh, yeah. So what color do you taste? I'm like, sugar. I can't taste anything. They all taste the same. I don't understand. And like all these girls are like, mm, I taste lemon with a hint of lime. I'm like, bullshit. I taste sugar with a hint of sugar. <laughs> I taste artificial flavoring and coloring. I never understood it. So I had such a bad stomach ache. So I'm like, ah, nah, I'm good. And jelly bears are just weird. I don't know. It's weesh. I only like the tutti fruity ones. No. Yeah, I haven't tried those. You have to, it's a gamble because you can get that or dirty socks. Oh, got you. Yeah. 
Yeah, because like the bean bruiser type ones. Yeah, that's the only time I would eat jelly beans. Yeah. They just, I don't know. They just seem like sugar. If I want to eat sugar, I need everything else that I enjoy. Apparently, like, I found this out the other day where it was like, my auntie came over. It was like her birthday or something. And everyone was having like tea and coffee. And my auntie was just like, oh yeah, I remember. I used to call you the sugar goblin. I'm like, why? She's like, oh yeah, every time we had sugar out, you just get a spoon and start eating the sugar. And I'm like, that explains a lot. Like, why did no one stop me? Yeah, and like, I remember her saying like, we tried to switch it up salt and you didn't notice. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with me? My cousin did the same thing. She grabbed the like uh, salt off the table and just started eating it. But she also had like salt deficiency. But like, you know, it was just weird like seeing her with like the giant bottle of table salt and just like start chugging it. And I'm like, I apparently used to do that with the sugar. And I'm like, I have no memory of this. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I ha- this is the one nickname I hate, but I don't care because mum only calls me it and she stopped. But she used to call me Paddle Pop Lion. I remember this. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Solely because of the fact that I liked Paddle Pops. Okay, could you not call me anything else? I mean, she also does call me Butter Chicken because I eat too much Butter Chicken, but that's not the point. <laughs> it's just because my mum was always the one that was like, ah, if you eat too much of this, you're going to turn into it. Yeah. So she was like, you eat too much Butter Chicken, you're going to turn into it. And I'd be like, at least I would taste delicious. And then just me eat too much McDonald's, and you don't, you're going to end up like McDonald's. I'm like, good. I'm like, so good people like me. <laughs> oh, what's a song that you wish more people knew about? Oh, I have too many. Or you can do an artist if you want. I have too many. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because, like, I want to say, like, because, like, I... Fun of fact, if you didn't know this, I like K-pop. But, like... Yeah, just yeah. a little bit. Because, <laughs> like, I know people would know, like, Stray Kids or, like, 80s because hmm. they're getting really popular now. And I'm just, like... I'm, like, I'm really big on, like, solo artists as well. But, like, I'm also, like... Hmm. I'm, like... What is someone that I know who's like not as big, but it could be big? I don't know. I'm making this harder than it seems. And no, it's you're like, fine. I don't mind straight away. Oh, the Nate. Yeah. <laughs> so, I. This is gonna sound really creepy, but I love this man. Not in like a like I want to marry him type of way, but in a like I respect him so much as an artist and just him as a human in general. He's cute, but that's not the point. But so if you don't know, his name is Nate Wants to Battle or Nathan Sharp, Nathan Smith. He has three different names. But um I believe yeah, it should be called Nathan Sharp Give Heart Records on YouTube. Or if you search up Nate One Spider pops up with the same thing. But he's a phenomenal artist. I love him. Just again, with his work and the work ethic and things like that he does. There are so many good songs he's done. Like, for one of them, one's called Bones. It's actually about his D D character. Ooh. So it's supposed to tie in with the backstory. You know, there's that one. There's uh, Call It Off is a really good one. It's basically talking about how you, know, you don't have to look into things for there to be meaning. Okay. You can just say stuff and it's fine. Because in the song, he literally says, like, oh, you're trying to find a meaning, but maybe there isn't one. And he's got so, like, I could keep going. There is, because um, I, for high school, I actually did a deep dive into one of his songs and tried to, like, pick it apart and analyze it. Okay. So I do that a lot now with his, his songs. I'll sit there and be like, oh, he said this. Probably ties into that. Especially if it's ones he's written. Because he writes all of his songs. But he either does parodies for them or he'll make songs based off of video games. But he has one or two albums. He has two albums, I think, that are solely just his own kind of thoughts in a way. And so that would be Sandcastle Kingdom. That whole album is really good. He's got like four or five different albums, but if I have to recommend a song, uh, I'm trying to think. I think All I See is a really good one of his. It's not my favorite, but All I See is a phenomenal song choice. I'm going to double check while you talk about yours. Yeah, okay. see. I, will, I legit just went on my Spotify and looked at all my artists. <laughs> what I'm doing. And I'm just like, I like, I was looking for it and I found, I actually want people to listen to this guy. He's really good. He's a Korean singer. His name is Juni. I've played a few of his songs, like, when I'm with you and, like, with the other girls and stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know too much about him, so, like, I won't go into too much detail, but I just find his voice really soothing, really beautiful and stuff. So, like, he's got, like, a song, like, I don't want like, um, he's got a song called Waste Your Time. Mm-hmm. And it's just, like, it's just really nice and, like, the melody and the beat. I don't know, it's just, I find his music really aesthetic. And, like, he's got, like, songs, like, called Thank You, Thank You, like, Thank You for Today. Mm-hmm. And like stuff like that, and it's just like real good drive music, pick me up music. It's just like it's just phenomenal. And I, 
I know he's from Canada. I don't know. I don't want to say where because I don't want to get it wrong. But he's like from Canada. He looks like so he's, he's on like a podcast with like these people I listen to. Um, what is it? Okay, I don't want to get the podcast wrong. Yeah, now you're <laughs> all good. Um, fuck. Oh, yeah, they're from Dive Studios. So like the podcast is like, oh, get real. So like BM from Card is on it. Peniel from B two B. Um, Ashley who was on like um. Maybe code. I please don't book, uh, kill kill me. <laughs> like, You're okay. Don't yeah. worry. But like generally, all the people who came from America or like somewhere else, talking about like K-pop and like just life in the podcast. And like I knew him before he went on the podcast, but I I got to see him and meet him and like hear his story and stuff. And I'm like, okay, this guy's really cool. I'm gonna play his music more often. <laughs> and, like yeah, I think it's it is helpful when you kind of meet them and talk to them. I've never met Nate. I think that would be the first time I would properly fangirl, to be honest, because like I even met my favorite band because I say his name's not a band, he's an artist, but my favorite band before was R5. So if you don't know, the easiest way for people to you know explain to people who don't know, it's by the Lynch family, so like Ross Lynch, who most people know, and his siblings. You got Riker, Rydell, Rocky, and you had also Ellington Ratliff, who was um, their best friend and was dating Rydell for a while before they broke up, but um, was also managed by Ross's youngest brother, Ryland. He was also the DJ as well. But um, they made music up until the end of 2018, and then they disbanded. And now they're doing their own like music and separation. They still play together, but not as a band. Yeah. Basically, the long and short of it is why they broke up is because so many people were being like, oh, but Ross, you're from Disney. Why are you doing these songs? You know, like how none of them were bad, but they were so fixated on they didn't want to ruin Ross's like Disney spotlight or like Disney appeal. Dude, Jake Paul ruined his Disney spotlight. Yeah. But that I think that's the problem is because this family, they don't really do anything. Yeah. They don't do anything bad or anything. But it was a sole factor of like, because I think he was still part of Disney as well um, he was only like his contract didn't end or something it probably had i don't know the full details but i don't think it fully ended if not he just got out of it okay. and so a lot of his fan base and a lot of the band's fan base were from r5 what are they doing this Disney? Disney? he was in austin and alley which is a disney show he played austin um he, why is that sound familiar so he was in that was he blonde yes i think i know what this is he is oh he was yes yeah, he, he's still blonde now he had a phase where he had brown hair but um yeah he was so for people who don't know uh ross lynch was in austin and alley he had a guest appearance in jesse yeah i know jesse he had he was in teen beach movie oh uh, yeah one two and three i think there's a third one yeah yeah um He's in now. He's done other things. Like he played a serial killer recently. He was on something else. I can't think off the top of my head. It's for you. No, no. The, when he played a serial killer, it was. It was I don't know. He, it was a movie. He's done some things like that. Emma. Some of you also might know Riker Lynch. He was on Dancing with the Stars, which was really cool. Uh, he came second place, which I'm sad he should have came first place because I just just so, me. The only person I know who was on Dancing with the Stars and one was Joe Sugg. Oh yeah, I was surprised by that. <laughs> yeah, and oh, I loved it when Bindi Owen was on there. I know! She was so good. She almost got kicked off of that show. Because she's Australian. Because they needed, um, because she was under the age of 21 in America, right? For us, um, it's 18. Yeah. You need both your parents to sign the contract. I oh, that bullshit. And if you don't know who Bindi Owen is, Bindi Owen is... It's the daughter of is Steve Irwin. Of the daughter of Steve Irwin. And Steve Irwin passed away in like... The legend. He is an Aussie legend, but he passed away in like 2008. Hey? Yeah, five, eight, under 20, 2010, basically. Yeah. But the Americans, he, whoever whoever was running Dance of the Stars, were like, no, we need your dad's signature. And so she was you arguing with them. Mad. She was arguing with them, being like, well, what do you want me to do? Like, I'm not just going to, like, dig him out of the grave. the grave to get him to sign a form. Yeah. So they had all these arguments, and obviously she won it. Um, Which is good on her it's like she did fantastic and also she shouldn't need her dead father to sign a form yeah i was gonna say like this. um before bindi you see she see her and die when she was at a very young age as well yeah so like that also makes it a bit like shut up <laughs> like, yeah and it's so weird because now she's like married and has a kid, has a kid. 
And like her brother is just like, what the fuck happened? I know, Robert. He's so cute too. He does painting like freaking. Yes. What's his name? Like Bob Ross. Yes. He's amazing. I think it was also them that make me want to be a zoologist because Bindi Owen had her own like TV show yeah. as a kid. And I'm like, I want to be that. That's so cool. And I'm like, hmm. Yeah, my friend, uh, well, she was my friend. We don't talk anymore, but she actually works in the same zoo as them. And she said it's really cool. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but um, kind of going back to what we're talking about. Oh no, the distraction didn't work. No, it's fine. Long and short of it, the, I can't pick a song because all of them are fantastic. So the albums that I would recommend for Nate Wants Battle in particular is Pain Exposure and Sand Castle Kingdom. He has done many albums. He's, on... He's done 14 albums in just under in five years so it's he's done a lot yeah (laughs) but um you know those two are the ones i would say are solely his own stuff and then the others are like you know thanks for the covers which is a play on thanks for the memories you know he's done a steven universe one he's done a bunch of other like solo songs too so like my hero academia to among us to I always forget what this one's called. They're like, what's that hotel? Has husbands? Yeah, husband hotel. Husband hotel. He's done stuff for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you know, Animal Crossing, a bunch of anime ones. I like um his. I don't know if it's a Halloween thing, but like you got me into it. Man, I don't know what's called. Uh, descriptive. He whispers in it. Oh, haunted <laughs> and unwanted. Yeah. Oh, that's a good song. I'm like, he whispers. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's from What You Want album. Yeah. That's the ha- haunted and unwanted. That's a song based off of Petscope, which is a video game. It's a very creepy video game. Blooming Good is all I'm going to say. Mini Play is also a good one off that album. I would just say, play for Jimmy. Um, songs I would recommend, I think I said them before, like Waste Your Time and Thank You. They're just both really good songs. And you also on Spotify, so if you just like legit type in Jimmy, you yeah. come up. And he's done like stuff with like other artists who are in like K pop or K pop, like PH1 and stuff. So like, and PH1 is phenomenal, like checking out too. Yeah, you'll see it all on screen as well. So. I will send you <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. We're almost done there, so. Oh. We've got this one. How do you want to be loved? In which way? <laughs> <laughs> Let me just <laughs> slide in with the feels. Yes. Um. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um. I don't know. Eh. Well, we can do it like this. How do you want to be loved? In like, like a friend type of way, or like love supported? And how do you be loved and supported by a partner? Because I think they're two very different yeah. ways. Do you want me to go first? Do you have time? Yeah. <laughs> so for me, for being loved and supported with friends, t- I guess it kind of comes back to what we were saying at the beginning of the podcast. But, you know, just listening is my main thing. Yeah. I'm not asking you to remember everything I say. Cause I don't remember anything I say half the time. But just kind of take time and listen. Even because... I'm a person who doesn't speak my emotions a lot, or if I do, it's mainly the positive ones. So I want to be able to feel comfortable to tell you how I'm feeling. And I will feel comfortable either with time or just if I think you're listening to me. And that's why I'll make jokes with people being like, oh, you're not listening to me. Because I generally fear that no one does listen to me. So I make those jokes just to kind of like, haha, you're not listening to me. I hope you are because I'm actually scared that you're not but you know I guess just listening and being there and then for the partner same philosophy with listening and being there but even just trying with my friends like I don't mean get with them (laughs) I just simply mean like you know even if it's like hey we're all hanging out as friends or things like that just try and Sorry, just there we go. But you know, I mean, it's just something as simple as like, hey, we're all sitting around and it's a party. I'm not saying be best friends with all of them and you know, you know, what's up bro, how you doing? Just even if it's like, oh, how are you? Like, oh, I remember like last time we chat, whatever, we talked about this or you know, like small talk. Yeah. Because 
my friends are my everything and you know I've made this very clear with people certain people I will be very protective over if they need me I will drop and run yeah I will go straight towards them and if my partner doesn't understand that then obviously either discussion needs to be had to explain why or that's it because you know my friends are my world and more than likely my partner would and should understand that it's just all about open communication and you know if they're willing to have open communication with me then that shows that they love they kind of love me because you know they're willing to talk i'm not asking again you know i'm not asking to just be like hey nice to meet you tell me all your deeper secrets <laughs> you know because that's scary yeah <laughs> you know a lot of people don't open up until like a year or two into any like friendship or even more yeah. it's all how you feel with the person so at the end of the day it's just having trust and being open i think is a way of showing love yeah mm-hmm. i think i'm like a bit on the same lines of like listening and stuff because like for me like i don't like being ignored mm-hmm. and stuff and like also like a bit of a pet peeve of mine is like me having to repeat myself because i know i have like a very like small voice and stuff and like I'm loud when I choose to be and like when people ask me to repeat myself for like five times I'm like I'm done go away but like yeah but for friends it kind of revolves both with like friends and like relationships if like it was like resolved with my siblings which I talked about in the beginning like who they have autism and like if you like I appreciate you trying like because it could be a different situation for some and like but i'm just like oh yeah hey like saying for pers- this is always like the one thing i had if i had a partner it was like if you don't like my siblings for how they are get out of my life because i don't have time for that i need you to be respectful and like understand this is how i live this is who they are neither one can change yeah and if you want that to change there's no point of you being there so like yeah that's just how i value love if like if you can love my siblings and me as well. I can see like, oh, you're, you're true. You, you mean everything you say. Like, yeah, it's just because like, I know it's very different to some people yeah. in that kind of situation. But I'm like, if you like, even put in that effort to be like, oh, okay, it's very nice and stuff. Like, yeah, like, like putting in the effort to try with your family, especially your siblings. Yeah, basically. And yeah, just like listening. Cause like, I remember like with like Dakota, she mentioned like something I brought up like briefly like oh yeah you bought a record player because you like you were just fascinated how it worked I mean you remember that <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's those little details that are nice to kind of remember yeah I guess you could say yeah it's just because like when someone brings it up again I'm just like wow this person actually listens what is this like <laughs> yeah it's the not used to per se yeah. yeah and the final question which honestly I don't know <laughs> I don't think is comfortable. I mean, we'll, I'll say it and then we'll see how we feel. But it's what's your trigger words and why? <laughs> this is what I mean by I don't know how we feel about this. I'm happy to not talk about it if you don't want to at all. Yeah, no, nah, I'm happy to pass it. Like, like, I'm, yeah. I think you know one, but I'm not putting that on the internet. Yeah, because, you know, I'm happy to kind of talk about a lot of things, but there are certain things that just... Yeah, like that's more personal. Yeah, like, that need to be like kept private. Like, I'll just say, it, from my, like, kind of the generic one we talked about before, but it's not a trigger word, but the whole just kind of being overtaught and ignored, yeah. that immediately, like, triggers my, like, anger in yeah. me. It's not a word, but it's that immediate, like, you're talking above me or you're talking about me when yeah. I'm in the room. That's when I'll immediately get, like, oh, now I'm pissed. Now yeah. I'm, you know, and yeah. that's when I'll get angry. So it's not, a, it's not words because that's not something I want to kind of, discuss but that's yeah. that trigger scenario mm-hmm. i guess i can kind of not not relate to that but like one where it's like if you talk above me mm-hmm. i think you're like superior to me where you're like you're like the same kind of like level as yeah. i am so like for example like you have like a big job and like i have a little job that's like because you have different like the, styles of life yeah, the styles of life that's where it's like okay i see where you're getting at both of us like we're generally on the same page and you think you're better than me i'm like Haha, i shall fight you bitch like, yeah that's why like i'll just say it. one of my trigger words is being called like a child or a little girl 
that pisses me off. To, like, depends obviously how you're saying it. Yeah. Because if you were to say like, oh, you look like, you know, you're dressing like a little girl today. Well, yeah, that's not as bad. But if you're being like, oh, you know, because you don't have a full-time job, you're a child. Yeah, I don't like that. Immediately, I'm going to say, well, fuck you, because that pisses me off. Again, I had that all throughout my last relationship. He constantly called me a child, even though I was older than him, uh, because I didn't have a full-time job. He didn't have one either. <laughs> Which, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> so, he had a casual to part-time job that he worked enough hours to be a full-time job but he was if it's not labeled don't fucking say it yeah but because i at the time i only had a casual job and i went to uni full-time and because i did dog training and i did st john twice mm. a week you did more than him i was counted as being a child and that pissed me off because I even said to him, I'm like, can you please stop calling me a child? Like, please stop calling me a little girl. It really makes me mad because it, it's immediately saying, like, you are putting me down or you're, yeah. you know, discouraging me and all this stuff. But it that's that's my, like, kind of trigger thing. Obviously, if you were just to be, like, randomly say it, I'm not going to be, like, attack. Because yeah. that's just, it's not, like, a trigger in that sense. It's more of a, I will get pissed off. Because you're basically saying to me, oh, you know, you're not good enough because, you know, you don't, like you were saying, you don't work the same as me or X, Y, Z. Yeah, X, Y, Z. It's infuriating. Yeah, I'll say one that's mine because, like, it's just funny Mm -hmm. to me. Like, my trigger word is princess. Yeah. This is because, like, I've mentioned it to my, my father as well. Like, he's like, oh, you're my little princess, like, princess this, princess that. And I'm like... Not a princess. Mm. Shut up. It's just like it's like those nicknames of like parents give you when you're a child and stuff. Yeah. It's like that kind of scenario, but I hate it where it's like if like he hasn't done it, but like if we some Ed called me princess, I'm like, nope, nope. I have things with that. Nope. And like I, I just find it weird. Yeah. And like it's also because like I don't like the fact of being called a princess because I don't need saving. I agree. That's yeah. why I don't like I it. Don't like- <laughs> ah. Because, like, princess automatically means, like, oh, I'm, I'm stuck in a towel all yeah, day. Yeah, you're useless. I need to say, yeah, you're useless. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm fucking not. Like, I'm not useless or I need saving. I can handle shit on my own. Don't call me princess. Yeah, that's that's the only reason why I don't like being called princess because it makes me sound like I can't do anything. Yeah. And, I, again, I hate being useless. It drives me insane. It's not even a nice pet name. It's fucking gross. <laughs> like, like, you know, like... I've made this joke to, like, our entire group friends, but, like, I'd rather be called Queen because, you know, that means that I'm actually doing shit, even though most of the time they're just a figurehead. At least they're doing something, (laughs) (laughs) you know? Like, obviously I'm not going to be like, hey, friends, call me Queen, because that's just stupid. But, you know, I'd rather that as a nickname versus Princess. Yeah. My brain goes to Princess Peach. She is so useless. Very little princess. What does Princess Peach do other than get kidnapped? I, I she still, gets kidnapped because she wants to see her lover. Yeah. Bowser. <laughs> I think they should be together. They should. They're actually really cute. Mario really? can suck it. Honestly, though, what has Mario ever done for her? Fixed her plumbing? No. He doesn't <laughs> do that. That's what I mean, though. Like, Bowser has bought her an expensive dress, a bouquet of flowers for her, got a venue ready for their wedding, actually proposed to her. What has he done? I think Luigi's done even more than Mario. Yeah. He's had a kid with her. <laughs> but that's what I mean though. Like, Mario doesn't do anything. He just goes in what we think is saving her. What if he's kidnapping her? And that's for another podcast. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about a different podcast. But no, what the fuck? But think about it. How often, you know, does we have to play as Mario and go save the princess in quotation marks? Does she really say anything when we take her? She goes, thanks, Mario. I'm going to go back home. She literally just goes, thanks. She doesn't go, thank you so yeah. much. I love you. Yeah, yeah. Now you think about how, where are we saving her from? Mm. From Peach's castle. Yeah. Where are we saving her from? A giant ass castle. Oh, what tragedy. Beauty and the Beast. Like, what are you... <laughs> what are you... Come on. Like, she's literally... <laughs> Beast prin- is a snapping turtle. <laughs> <laughs> but think about it. She is, her literal name is Princess Toadstool. She... Her entire kingdom was run by Goombas. Who looks after Goombas? Bowser. Ding, ding, ding. So why would Mario 
Save her. Save her from her own kingdom. <laughs> Back to a cab. Like, we'll take like, this out. But do you know what I mean, though? Because, like, in the original Super Mario Brothers, it says on the actual thing, her name is Princess Toadstool. Yeah. And I think even um, the career had said, yeah, the Toadstools are the Goombas. Because there's this theory going around that Toad is an affected Goomba. So the Goombas had an infection, which is the mushroom on their head, which oh. is what changes them into Toad. Or, like, Toads. And that's why Toad's kind of a bitch. Because Toad is a bitch. That's what I'm saying. That's why he's kind of bitchy. Because he's so grumpy because of the infection, oh. which is the mushroom hat on his head. I have a lot of theories about Mario. <laughs> I like it though. Like well, it kind of makes sense when you think about it. Really? The, I'm like I don't really like Mario anymore. Well, the fate log. You know what I mean? Like Luigi doesn't really do much. Does he really help Mario save Princess Peach? If you switch over to like his character, yeah, yes, but, no. but like any like in the storyline though, he's not there. No one, none of his friends are there. Only Yoshi's there because he you abuses know, him. Yeah, he abuses him. That's it. He, Friggin' punches him in the back of the head to get that tongue out. Yeah. That's what I mean, like... We're playing a villain. Dun, dun, dun. This is... We'll end after this, but like... Is the only reason that we're taught that he's not a villain because he's human? Dun, dun, dun. And because he's a white human? It's a me, I'm Mario, I'm white. Well, think about it. Well, yeah. He's made by the Japanese, speaks Italian, or is supposed to be an Italian man, yeah, who speaks English. He's supposed to be Carpenter, he looks Mexican. Yeah, he looks Mexican, he was supposed to be Carpenter originally, is now a plumber. How much more basic white man's job can you get? It's a blue collar job. That is like, depicted as like, well depending on the situation of course, but like normally it's like, he, yeah, just very much like human job compared to other things. Uh, we always depict humans most of the time, anyway, as the heroes. the heroes. What if he's not? But we're so ingrained with thinking humans are the heroes, we don't think otherwise. And that's will end this podcast. Freaking <laughs> job, you fuck. <laughs> Thank you for joining me, Alyssa. <laughs> I'm just gonna have a mental crisis to play a fucking Bowser and fucking Mario. Yeah. Welcome. This is why I don't talk about Mario too much, because I that happens. You're right? Yeah. Mm, well, he hasn't confirmed or denied it. He's also a video game character. Oh no, I'm saying the creator. Oh, uh, <laughs> Mario, <laughs> c- confess. Well, why would he? You'd be like, yes. <laughs> uh, he's crazy. I'm gonna show you some evidence later. Anyway. I'm going to stop before this keeps going. <laughs> anyway, we will talk to you guys in the next podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>